Hey everybody, Josh from Populi talking easy online tests. To clarify, the tests don't have to be easy. They can be difficult, demanding, even punishing. But we're looking at a real simple example so you can see how things are set up and get started with online tests. Before we get into the meat of the matter, go ahead and click subscribe down below and then you'll get that notifications bell. Click that as well. These are online tests that are administered in Populi. So students will log in and if the availability window for that test is open, students will be able to take it. What is this? Someone trying to remember the name of the luxury car company that ends in Royce? Because we're talking the roles that you need. We're tackling this from the perspective of faculty role or teaching assistant, but the academic admin or registrar role would also be able to do most of what we're looking at here. To design and create a test, we first need to go to the assignments tab because we have to have an assignment component for the test. So we're gonna add an assignment here and we'll just give it a quick name. We'll set the type to test. We'll give it some points. And then we will also give it a due date. This could be added later. You could come back and edit this assignment here. And then everything else down here, we're gonna leave set just the way that it is. This can also be changed later. Notice the published yes, no field. As you're creating this, it probably makes sense to leave that set to no. Students can't see it, they're not aware that it's there. And then you can set it to yes after you've created the test that goes along with the assignment. Now we can design the test itself. We could click right here and then click into the test there, or we can click on tests over here and then find that in the list of tests. We'll click on that. You can start by adding a heading or some text. The heading would be just to mark out different sections and then text would be instructions or a description of a particular question or set of questions. But then what we really wanna look at is the question. So we'll click to add a question there. You can see the different types of questions that we can create here. The only one that has no automatic grading associated with it is the essay question. That just has to be marked manually. Short answer can be set up to work mostly automatically, and we'll get to that later. The rest of these you will set up and you'll define which are the correct answers and answers that students give will be marked as correct or incorrect based on that. We'll set up a multiple choice question here. We'll put in a few values down here. And then we'll choose which of them is correct. We'll tick this right here for the correct answer. And then we'll assign some partial credit for this other answer as well. And you can do that for any answers you want. We'll give it two points and then we will save. And now we're gonna hop over to a test that we've already set up so that you can see what's going on there. So you can see here that we've added a heading and we've added descriptive text there and then we've got our questions in here. We've got a couple multiple choice questions. We've got a section with essay questions down here at the bottom and then we have a short answer section. One thing that you'll notice here as well over on the right is that we still have two points unassigned. When that happens you're not able to have students take the test. All points have to be assigned in some way. So let's go ahead and add another question here and then assign those two points. We're going to do a short answer question so that you can see how this works. So we'll add that real quick and then we will add a few answers here. And we've added the correct answer right there. Then we can choose incorrect answers. So if students enter these answers, they will automatically be marked as incorrect. We'll give it two points and then we'll hit save. Now you can see that all those points have been distributed and students would be able to take that test. Let's click over to that preview tab there so you can see how things are looking. Looks good. Now we'll show you how that test looks as a student takes it. And then we'll show you how a submitted test looks to faculty and how to be graded works. As this student on this course, I see an alert here. 
I could click on that and I'd be taken to the test or I can go down here and click on tests and click take now there. Once you do that, you've got some details about starting the test, all that, and then the option to start test. I'm gonna go through and input some answers here. With all that entered, I can click submit test. And then because of how this test is set up, I'm getting immediate feedback about the things it can show me. There are a few things here that I can't get immediate feedback about because they require the instructor to weigh in. We'll go back to that faculty user, back to the course, and then we'll see what submitted tests look like from their perspective. I'm gonna to go to tests here and then into that test and then into the history tab. And you can see here that we have that timestamp. If I click on that timestamp, I'm able to see a student's submissions there. And then I could edit points, add comments here for these essays. I can read them through and then add a comment or um, give points. I'll show you what that looks like real quick. I click edit points. I could just immediately give 100% that way. I could type in the points or fractions of points there, choose other partial credit options, and then I can save points. But then we also have the to be graded tab over here. This just aggregates all of the student answers that haven't been graded yet. So you can just kind of move through those real easily. That way it works basically the same as what we just saw. You're able to choose the point values you want to award for the student's work, add comments, etc. Let's go down to the bottom here. We'll see a couple of those short answer responses. And what you'll see here is these aren't being marked as correct or incorrect because they're not answers that were included as we were setting up the short answer question there. As long as these are duplicate responses, we only have to set one of them as correct or incorrect, and then Populi will carry that through to any other duplicates. Let's go back to tests and then back into that test we've been working with there. And then over here on the right, we'll run through what your options are on a few of these items. For due dates here, we could add an exception. So you just choose one of the students and then you can give them a due date exception really easily and then let them know about changes. So this student would have a later due date than others potentially. For availability, we have the same option. You can also change the availability here. This is set to always be available, but you can also set it to be available from one time to another and then make your availability window that way. We can also add an exception here. So if a student can't, for whatever reason, take the test at a certain time, you can give them an exception and then they'll be able to take it another time. You can set a password that you would then give to students and then they'll have to enter that password in order to take the test. The IP address filter allows you to set an IP address so that if you have an IP address for say your school and you want students to only be able to take the test on campus, they would have to have a campus IP address in order to take the test. You can also set a time limit here and then you can add an exception for that for students who are allowed to take longer on a given test. We can add retakes. So you can say that a student can retake this test twice. So they would take it once and then two more times. And then you can also choose uh, a policy for that. You keep the highest score, most recent, or an average of all scores. Feedback here lets you set when students are able to see the grade or response scores and feedback or even correct answers. Is that gonna happen after taking the test or is it going to happen after a test end date? And you can mix and match those there. We have a proctoring feature. You can choose whether um, that has to be through text or if it could be through email or text. And then with all of these settings, we have more documentation that will link below in the description if there's anything else there that you wanna dig into further. Remember that the test we were creating 
we left unpublished. So let's look at how we change that. We'll click on assignments over here and then go to that test assignment. And then we'll click edit over here for info. And then for published here, we'll click yes and then save. Now that assignment is ready to go. And before we go, if this video was helpful, or even if it wasn't, why don't you click like. Check us out on social media. You'll find the links in the description below. I'm Josh for Populi. Thanks for watching.